So let us rejoice and be glad in it. This morning, I wanted to invite you in joining me as I pause for just a moment to ask God's blessings upon today's worship service. Father God, we thank you for your kindness, your tender mercies. It is at this moment that we humbly present ourselves before your throne of mercy. And we're open to you to move in whatever way you see fit on today. Lord, I ask that you allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be acceptable in your sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. This morning, I wanted to share with you a portion of scripture found in the Hebrew Old Testament book of Psalm 34. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. This morning I wanted to talk and to preach from the subject, finding a source for inspiration. Uh, as we continue to journey through this season that has been described in many ways, uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19, coronavirus, I must admit and I must confess this morning that there are moments in which I find myself needing a new source of inspiration. In other words, needing that one thing to encourage my spirit and to encourage my heart. And I trust that if you are honest as well, there are also times in your life in which you need to find just one additional source of inspiration. And oftentimes, uh, when we seek out those moments and sources of information, it seems as if none can be found. But I have discovered along my Christian journey that there are certain reliable places I can find myself going back to time and time again to find inspiration and even instruction as well as application. And that place is in the book of Psalms. Psalms is a portion of scripture found in the Old Testament that has not only inspiration, but it offers instruction. And if you read it closely, it'll give you application as well as proclamation. And so in the book of Psalms, it has been put together um, by writers both unknown and known. Many of us are more familiar with the songs of David. And this morning, the portion of scripture that I read for your hearing is indeed attributed to David, um, the psalm writer. And for those of you who may not know who David is, David was a unique individual in the Old Testament. For David was a man after God's own heart. David, oftentimes for those that know who he was, uh, remember him as king of Israel and, 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 and in the midst of his kingship um, made a mistake. And for many of us, we have attributed all of his characteristics and all that we remember him of that one mistake David made. And after having made that mistake, he tried to go back and cover it up. But that is just a small uh, portion of who David was. For David uh, was a man, even as a young man, uh, one who understood who God was and allowed God to use him. And if you go back and read the Old Testament, you'll find that David, even as a young man, um, stood up against uh, the, the Goliath and the Philistine and stood out when others would stand down. And he stood up and declared that his God was a God who would defeat his own enemies. And so David is also known as one who defeated Goliath, but also defeating him with a testimony. But many may not be aware that when David was anointed by Samuel, uh, many of us believe or thought that David went from that anointing by Samuel directly to the palace, but David did not go directly to the palace. David had a trial and a tribulation he had to face uh, prior to going into the palace for David, after having been anointed by Samuel, was then pursued and even persecuted by his close friend who was at that time king whose name was Saul. And so David had a unique testimony, a unique story, as David, as I said on a few Sundays ago, had to flee for his own life. For as a result of his friend's jealousy, 
he was forced into hiding. He was forced to, to, to seek out and live in a strange land and a place that he was not familiar with. But though David lost much of what he physically owned, David never lost his testimony. And so David understood that in the writing of this song, that, that in spite of what you go through and in spite of where we find ourselves, it is important to know that there is yet still inspiration, not in those places of comfort, but even in those places of trouble, in those places where we find ourselves. So David says that, that I will bless the Lord every chance I give in, 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 my, in my mouth, the praises of God will be continuously, which simply means that I will praise God in those good times and I will praise God in those bad times. And Psalms is a place that we find ourselves, for in the book of Psalms, we find even the language of the church. For in Psalms, we find such encouraging words as to wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. It is in Psalms that we find out that God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in the time of trouble. It is in Psalms that we know that we are to be still and know that I am God. That we also know that weeping may endure for a night, but there is joy in the morning that let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. So it is in Psalms that David discovered his inspiration and we too can discover those same places and forms of inspiration. And so David declares that I will continually praise God no matter where I find myself, in spite of what the enemy is trying to do to me, in spite of those that seek to harm me, in spite of those moments in which I feel like giving up. I will never give up on God and I know that I will continue to praise. So does that mean we are to pretend and act as if we are not going through things? I would say to us, certainly not. For it is in those moments of inspiration that we recognize the reality in which we find ourselves. For David understood his reality. He knew that he was in a place of danger, but he knew that the danger that he faced was not greater than the God that he served. And so I say to us to be encouraged and to know that in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our trouble and tribulations, to know that we will continuously praise God and also to know that, that no matter where we find ourselves, we will continue to say that it is well with our souls. And David said that just as he breathes each breath, he will praise God. So every time he takes a breath, he will also praise God. And so praise was a part of who David was and it was part of his being for he said that as long as I have breath in my body I will praise God which means that even to the last breath that I breathe I will continuously praise God so what does that really mean does that mean that we ought to be in a state of of celebratory praise no it simply means that we ought to have an attitude of praise we ought to have the mindset of praise. We ought to also have this attitude that, that no matter what we find ourselves, we'll be willing to say, but God. So when trouble is at every hand and it seems I want to give up, I can say, but God will deliver me. When money is at a place where it seems that it has run out, I will say, but God is still my provider. When sickness even overtakes my body, I will yet say, but God is yet still my healer. And that is how we go about finding new inspiration, even in the book of Psalms. And so it is not so much that we continuously encourage ourselves, but know that there are moments in our lives that we have to do just that. When others will not encourage us, we have to be willing to encourage ourselves and to inspire ourselves and to seek out the word of God, to find those moments in which we can celebrate even when we have to celebrate by ourselves. But I believe that God does not intend for us to simply to celebrate by ourselves. For even David in that third verse says, he models what praise and celebration ought to look like and he encourages those around him. So I am encouraging you this morning that you too might take upon an attitude of praise and celebration that even in your homes this morning that you set up and have church even if it means having church all by yourself and to know that you are never really worshiping by yourself because God is a God that is ever present with us. And so find those spaces of worship, find those spaces of praise, 
look not to the negative things in life, but to look to encourage yourself to know that even in our darkest moments, in those darkest hours, it is always brightest before the dawn. And so know that God is a God that does not need our praise. Watch this. But he wants our praise. He does not need our gifts to him. He does not need our sacrifices. But it is to our benefit that we give a sacrificial worship. So as we worship, let us know that we are giving of ourselves to know that everything that we have, our very being, belongs to God. So whatever we have this morning, we ought to give it to God. And no worship, no praise is too small. Even if you run out of strength, if you run out of what you consider to be good health, just know that you are to give all that you can. And when you've given that little bit, God has a way of taking that little bit and added a whole lot to it. So even when I find myself at the end of my rope, I have discovered that that is the place where I found God's face and God's presence. So David says to us in the story of, of this unique individual who is again a man after God's own heart, models what it means to celebrate and to praise God. So I am encouraging us to keep up the good fight, to continue to press on, to know that in God's own time, a change will certainly come. And so be encouraged and know that in those darkest days, God will offer a ray of sunshine. When, those other, when others have given up, don't give up. And know that your test is just the prelude for your testimony. May God bless you and may heaven continue to shine upon you in all the days to come. And just remember, when we won't, God will, and when we can't, God can.